Hi there, this is Architect David. Welcome to Arkida, where you can learn anything and everything about construction. For this video, we will be talking about hot and cold water systems. So what are water heaters? For this picture, you will see on the right side, it is a tank type electric water heater. The volume of this water heater is enough to provide heated water in the whole house. While the picture on the left side portion is what is called as the point of use. This is located in certain toilets or kitchens, meaning to say, when you only need heated water on that area, you turn on the point of use. Same thing with the electric type water heater, the point of use is run by electricity. Then we have the gas type of water heater. It is the same as the tank type because it is all obviously a tank type, but the heating element here is not run by electricity, but instead by gas. On the right side portion is what is called as a solar water heater. It is usually located on the roof or on the roof decks or the upper part of the house, wherein it should be receiving direct sunlight. Now using that solar, it will heat up the water in your tank which also provides hot water to your system now just a review these are the three most common areas wherein you will need water heater or heated water so you can either use a point of use for each of these spaces or come up with a centralized tank type water heater now moving on the four different types of shower systems are the digital, the electric, the mixer, and the power showers. Of course, there are more specialized types and you'll see lots of different types popping up everywhere. But you just have to remember these four types first. Now, before we talk about the different types of shower that you might be tempted to opt for, you're going to need to know about the different considerations for choosing a shower system. Your shower system is a very complex network of water systems and each system of water gives hot and cold water, varying water pressure and many options of water flow. So if you look at the picture down below, you may see the water pressure that is required to get that flow of water. First of all, you will have to consider your water pressure. The first thing you'll need to consider is whether your water pressure is typically low pressure or high pressure. If you do not have a high pressure, there are ways to boost this. Water pressure is heavily influential in deciding which type of shower you need, purely because this factor will influence how powerful shower accessories are. Water pressure is simply the measure of force to get water flow through a main system and into your pipe work. So in the event you need a higher water pressure but you have an existing low water pressure, then you may start opting to use water pumps. Now let's talk about water system. The first is what is called as a gravity fed. These types are unfortunately known for having a poor pressure and flow of your water supply. Realistically, gravity-fed systems result in a low water pressure. However, you can easily install a shower with pump mechanisms to boost the water pressure. One pump alone could easily feed two or three showers at once. So this is a great option if you have a property with multiple showers and want each to be a powerful shower. But if you just want a shower that will just blow out the water into the shower head, then you don't need a pump. To get an adequate pressure of your gravity fed system, the out or the pipe out of this tank should be one floor above the shower head. So remember that. So meaning to say, if you do have a shower on your top floor, you will have to, in you will have to install your gravity fed tank one floor higher. Okay. Now another option is what is called as a combi boiler. 
These boilers rely solely on main pressure to deliver a hot and cold water supply around your home. Combi boilers are generally the best for supplying a hot water supply on demand and they supply the highest water pressure where possible. Combi boiler systems are compatible with mixer showers in order to meet these demands. So, for a combi boiler, there is also an attached pump, which is pumping water into the combi boiler. Now, an unvented system is also known or commonly known as the point of use. An unvented shower system requires a separate hot water cylinder to store an amount of hot water at mains pressure. Meaning to say, these machineries here have a small water tank inside wherein the cold water is being pumped into that, then it goes into a heater, then it goes out as heated water. Now let us discuss about shower heads. You will want to consider which type of shower head is going to give you the best controls over your preferred temperature inside the shower. Shower heads are important in fulfilling this role for your ultimate showering experience. If you look at the left hand most picture, you will see a wall mount that is your normal type of shower head. While on the middle part or the middle picture is what is called as a ceiling mount. It is the shower head is mounted on the ceiling which gives you an experience or a feeling that it is just raining. On the right side picture is what is called as the exposed wherein from the mixing valve to the shower head to the handheld shower all the pipes are now exposed. Shower trays. Although shower trays are not part of the hot and cold water system, it is best to include them in this discussion. The old design of showers was very big but now with the smaller footprint given to toilets shower trays are now used as part of the shower system now going on to the four types of shower the first is the digital shower digital showers can be described as groundbreaking alternatives to electric showers mixer showers or power showers here are the key features and advantages. The main elements, it works similarly to a mixer shower taking hot water flow straight from the boiler. Some are compatible with smart technology, versatile in that they're available for all types of hot and cold water supply. Try to see the second item. Some are compatible with smart technology, meaning to say you can now pre-program a digital shower. Before you take a bath, you can now pre-program the water temperature that is supposed to come out of your shower head. Next is the electric shower. As you can see from the picture, it is just your point of use shower system. So electric showers are brilliantly suited to offering hot temperatures on demand. They operate by channeling cold water from your main system and then heat this water inside the unit. Then lastly is the power shower. It requires a heating element for both hot and cold water. And it has to have the best water pressure. But it tends to use more water than other shower models. If you look at the picture on the right, you will see that you already have your shower head on top. But you also have smaller shower heads on the side, watering the middle or even the lower parts of your body. Next comes the mixer shower or the mixing valve. This is used to mix the hot and cold water coming into your system and going out to your shower heads. If you look at the picture above, the first option is a manual single, meaning to say you only have one single valve wherein you will have to turn it left or right to get the proper water pressure. The picture in the middle is called the manual double, wherein the red mark marks it as the hot water and the blue marks it as the cold water so you will just have to manually mix it to get the desired water temperature the thermostatic the picture down below you have a hot and cold water supply now you can control the flow and control the temperature 
at the same time. Meaning to say, these are all digital. Or, it may be analog, but you can now control the temperature coming out of the water. You don't need to feel it anymore. You just have to set the temperature level. Now, the next part of a hot and cold water system are called valves. Valves are devices that regulate the movement of fluids through the pipes. The types are usually known as ball valves, gate and butterfly valves, diaphragm and globe valves, locking valves, zone and solenoid valves, check and pressure balance valves. Ball valves Ball valves are made with a rotating sphere that has a hole in it. In the open position, the hole in the sphere is in line with the pipe. When closed, obviously, the hole in the sphere is perpendicular to the pipe, thus preventing the water from flowing. The lever handle operates the valve but also serves as an indicator for whether the valve is open or closed. Similar to a ball valve, we have what is called as a butterfly valve. A butterfly valve has a disc that is equal in size to the inside diameter of the pipe. This disc is attached to a lever handle that rotates the disc, which adjusts the flow of water. The main drawback to butterfly valves is that the control disc is always present within the flow of water, even when fully open. So there will always be a pressure drop when using them. Next, we have what is called as gate valve. This is usually located on the main right before it branches off to the several uses. In the kitchen or in the toilet, it branches off on the kitchen sink. In the toilet, it branches off on the lavatory and the shower stall and the water closet. So, gate valves control water flow by raising or lowering the gate, which is generally a piece of metal. There is a wheel or knob at the top of the gate valve that controls the height of the gate. This in turn affects the flow of water. Unfortunately, the wheel doesn't provide any indication of whether the valve is open or closed or to what extent. Diaphragm Valves A diaphragm valve is similar to a gate valve in that there is a wheel or knob that moves an element in the valve fitting which limits the flow of water. In a diaphragm valve, the element is a diaphragm that settles down over a saddle, thus stopping water flow. The diagram below is a weir-type diaphragm valve where water pressure passes over a weir. There is also a straight-type diaphragm valve which doesn't force water over a weir. Globe valve Similar to a gate valve, globe valves are used to throttle or limit the flow of water. They have a stopper that is raised and lowered by a wheel or knob on a shaft. The stopper seals into a baffle to stop the flow. Globe valves are used in situations where the flow needs to be adjusted regularly, but also where the flow doesn't have to be fully open since the baffle restricts the flow. Next is what is called as a locking valve. Based on its name and on the picture attached, you will see that you can attach a padlock on a locking valve. Usually, these are valves that are installed outside a certain area. Let's say outside, outside your uh, toilets or even outside the house. Wherein This will prevent users from playing around or closing and opening the valves. Next is what we call as zone and solenoid valves. Zone valves are used in hydronic heating and cooling system to control the flow of water or system. Basically, a zone valve is just a valve that provides heated water or cooling water into certain zones of a structure. Same way with the solenoid valve, which is electric, electrically controlled, which can offer precise on and off control via an automation system. A solenoid valve can now be controlled via your cell phones if you are into the Internet of Things or IoT or into automation. Then the last type of valves are the check and pressure balance valves. 
Check valves are used to keep water flowing in only one direction. They are generally not operational, meaning to say you don't have to have any type of lever to close and open this check valve. Usually, a check valve is installed right after the water meter. Because if you do not have a check valve there and there is a low water pressure from the utility, but you have high water pressure on your side, the water will start flowing back to the utility system. The only drawback here is when it goes back to the utility system, the meter does not roll back, the water meter. So meaning to say you have used up a certain amount of cubic meters of water, but you are returning some of them. Down below is called a pressure balance valve which is used to maintain a constant temperature of water in domestic showers or bathtubs. This one, you can set it to come up with a certain pressure that you would like to come out of the out portion of this valve. This is to provide constant water pressure to the shower systems of, let's say, a bathtub or domestic showers. I hope you learned a lot of things here about the hot and water system that you are able to use for your design or for your use in your own residences. Watch out for my next video and see you then. Click the subscribe button to discover all the other videos in this site. Click the notification bell to be notified about new videos that we post. If you have additional comments, please post them down below or at our Arkida Facebook page and I will answer all your queries. Thank you.